Today, we will go over what you might hear referred to as gamer's thumb, which is the Quervain's tenosynovitis. This is a clinical diagnosis and involves inflammation of the tendons of the first dorsal compartment of the hand and their synovial sheaths. The tendons involved are the extensor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis longus, abbreviated as EPB and APL. Women are more likely to be affected. You are more likely to see this in the patient's dominant wrist. And on physical exam, you are likely to see tenderness with palpation of the radial styloid. The patient most likely will have pain with resisted radial deviation, but will have full range of motion. The Eichhoff and Finkelstein maneuvers are commonly employed to assess for de Quervain's tenosynovitis. The Eichhoff maneuver involves the patient holding on to their thumb within a clenched fist and then quickly doing ulnar deviation of the wrist. A positive Eichhoff test would involve pain with ulnar deviation. As for the next maneuver, the Finkelstein test involves the healthcare provider holding on to the patient's thumb and passively flexing it into the palm of the patient's hand. Again, pain with the maneuver would be a positive finding. Treatment is typically conservative management with thumb spike abrasives, rest, and NSAIDs. Steroid injections may be done for refractory cases, and in severe cases, a first dorsal compartment release may be done in which the extensor retinaculum is cut. Quickly going back to the two tendons involved, as this is most likely what you will be pimped on in clinic while on rotation. So remembering that they are specifically the abductor and extensor tendons is pretty straightforward when you think of where these tendons are located on the dorsum of the wrist. Then you know that one is longest and one is brevis. Then to remember that it is specifically EPB and APL and not EPL and APB. I remembered that the B went with the E. It kind of rhymes EPB, so EB. And then just APL so that the abductor is the longest by exclusion. I know this seems a bit silly, but again, when you are just starting out, remembering EPB and APL are the two tendons involved isn't such a knee-jerk reaction when you are just starting out in your training. Okay, I hope this helped and I will see you on the next one.